Hey, it's Logan from Music for Makers, and in this video, you're going to learn how you can customize an audio track to better fit your video or podcast or other project, and you don't have to be a professional audio engineer to do it. Before we can start customizing a song, we're going to need an audio editor. Now, in this tutorial, I'm going to be using Reaper, which is a digital audio workstation or DAW. They offer a 60-day free trial, so I'll put a link to that down in the description, but if you already have an audio editor that you're comfortable with, uh, it's fine to use that. There are two other free options that are very popular, Audacity and Arter. They work on all major computer operating systems. And uh, you know, it's fine to use one of those too because what I'm going to cover today, the basics of audio editing, they're pretty much universal regardless of software. Now, if you're not using Reaper, some of the keyboard shortcuts um, or exact steps to do something might be a little bit different, but again, kind of the, the core um, essentials of audio editing are really gonna be the same. So uh, with that out of the way, let's get into it. Go ahead and open your audio editor, whether that's Reaper or another one, and import your audio track, and let's get to it. Okay, so once you've imported your song into your audio editor, it should look something like this. The first thing we're going to talk about is how to create a fade. Now a fade, if you're not familiar, is basically when the volume goes up or down, and this can be useful, especially for creating smoother transitions in your project. So, uh, you know, a fade in at the beginning of your project or fade out at the end. Um, but more importantly, you know, especially for customizing songs and kind of remixing, fading can, especially cross fades, can help us really kind of smooth out things and hide any of the edits that we make. So creating fades in Reaper is very easy. To create a, uh, a fade in, you basically just grab, if you see my, my cursor, it turns into a little arc. You grab right there, so you click, and then you just drag forward. And that's really all there is. So it sounds like this. A nice little gradual intro versus this. Now the same is true for fade outs. So you wanna grab the top right of the track and drag left. So now it would sound like this. Finally, to do crossfades, Let's say we have two clips. Basically, you just drag one track over the other. So, if these were two separate tracks, you'd grab one, so click, and then drag to the left. You could drag to the right as well to kind of get a more better balance. So that, that uh, kind of leads us on to the next step, which is to create a, a remixed version of a song. What you're going to look for when you're trying to do remixes is natural breakpoints in the song, natural areas where we could split the track and it wouldn't be that noticeable. So this is typically going to be like when a verse leads into a chorus or just when a song changes in terms of the arrangement or the progression. Many times this is also going to be marked by a peak or a spike in the waveform itself. So if you look here, you can see that this is a pretty distinct, you know, we're tapering down here and then it pops back up. So this is you know, obviously something changes here. There's either a, you know, a crash of a cymbal or the kick of a, a kick drum, something like that. So let's listen. Yeah, so, you know, we have the electric piano kind of fading out and then you have it coming back in with the kick drum as well. So we have that spike there. So that's a really natural place to split it. Before we really do any real cutting though, we wanna make sure that our project timeline and the snap grid, that's these, all these little lines, we wanna make sure those are as tight as possible so that our cuts are as precise as possible. So to do that, at least on Mac, the shortcut is Option L, and that pops open the snap grid settings. And basically, you just wanna make sure that this top setting is 1 1 28th. That just makes them, you know, again, the, the grid very tight. So that means that when we scroll in, you can see there's many, many lines here and that allows us to get right before that beat. So we can split it with sh keyboard shortcut S, and now we have this new section. So if we delete this, this would, in theory, sound like it's basically starting uh, from the beginning of the track. And there is a little bit of blip of audio there, and so to get rid of that, we can just create a little more of a fade or just tighten it up. So another example would be like, say we want to uh, remove a certain section of the song. So there's kind of this funky bridge with, a, uh, with some brass in there, right here. So say we want to remove that section, like we just don't want brass in that song, it doesn't fit the project. 
then what we want to do is cut before that section and cut after that section and then just remove it. Again, we're going to look for kind of where that section starts. And you can see it's marked by this waveform right here, this peak in the waveform. So we're going to go right before that and hit S. And now we've clipped right before that. Now we want to go to the end of that section. Okay, so that's where the original motif there comes back in. So again, we want to find kind of where that peak is. Looks like it's right about there. So S. Now we just can take this whole middle section and hit delete. Then we take the end of the track, slide it backwards until it meets. And then this is where that crossfading comes in handy, like I mentioned before. So we have two tracks and you can just click, drag to the left, click on the right side, drag to the right. And then now we're going to have a, a smoother transition here. So it's like that middle section with the brass and the horns, it never existed. So once you understand the basics of creating fades and remixing a track and rearranging it, uh, really shortening and lengthening it is pretty simple. So let's look at how to do that. So first of all, let's say like we wanted the song to end around one minute, the one minute mark instead of, you know, about two and a half minutes. Now there are a couple ways we can do that. First of all, we could just you know, take the track back here uh, and then create a fade. And that would sound like this. Now, that's not necessarily bad, and, and that could be exactly what you're looking for, but in some cases, you may want the song to end naturally, you know, the way that it originally did. And in that case, we're actually going to have to remove sections of the song and move the ending earlier in the timeline, like we just did with that section with the, the horns. So to do that, again, let's say we want to end around the one minute mark. First, we want to listen to the ending and kind of hear what's around that, get the context of that. Okay, so now we kind of hear how that, that one arrangement right there is ending, how that measure is ending. We want to look for the part of the song uh, close to the one minute mark that also matches that if there is such a part. So let's listen. Okay, so it sounds like we could actually maybe cut right before that brass section and move the ending there. So if we cut right before that brass section and then we cut right before the ending note, delete that section in the middle, drag the end back, and without any crossfades, it sounds like this. So you hear a little bit of a blip there. Uh, at that point, we want to get in there and kind of lengthen one section, shorten the other section, just move stuff around until it sounds smooth and like it's supposed to. So let's do that real quick. So really, you can just drag one section back and forth. Okay, that sounds pretty perfect already. We've got that crossfade in there. Um, I think that's pretty good, but if you look at the time, even if we shorten the very end here and create a little crossfade or a fade out right there, we're still at 114. If we really want to hit around the one minute mark, we're probably going to have to remove some of the intro. So that's pretty simple with this song, again, because we have such clean breaks here. So again, we're just going to come in, click right before one of them, and then delete the, front, the top section there, select everything drag it back, and now, now we're at the 104 mark, and honestly, that feels pretty good to me. Um, you could always come in here and, and do that again, split it, drag it back, and now we are shy of a minute, so that's pretty good. You can actually remove this fade if you want, uh, and you're still under the one minute mark. So the song starts like this. So it sounds like a natural start, it ends like this. Sounds like a natural end. There's no bridge in the middle. Uh, it's really, you know, a unique mix. So that's really all there is to shortening a song. 
Lengthening is just the reverse. And typically, if you're going to, to lengthen a song, what you're looking to do is uh, create loops within the song. So just extend certain sections by repeating them. The way you do this is, if we just think about kind of back to remixing, we're looking for sections of the song that are kind of natural breakpoints. Uh, and we want to take those and just copy and paste them. So let's say we wanted this song to be, I don't know, three minutes long then there's a few different things we could do. We could repeat the intro. Uh, it kind of just depends on what your project calls for. So um, in some cases, you know, you may want the intro to last twice as long and you want the rest of the song to be half as long. And in that case, you just go in and kind of adjust. So let's say that we that's what we, we wanted. We wanted to have the intro riff to keep playing uh, much longer. What we would do is go in here and find the end of the intro. So I believe that's right about here. So we're going to cut right before that transition. And now we can just slide this out of the way. And keyboard shortcut here to du duplicate this track is Command D. Now let's listen to this transition first. That's actually, I think, pretty good. Let's go ahead and create a transition. So let's drag this track to the right. Let's listen again. Okay, so that sounds pretty good. And now if we drag this track back again, looks, we're already at the three minute mark, so that's all we needed. There's a third way that you can adjust the time or the duration of the track. And you have to be careful with this one because too much manipulation will become obvious and it'll actually kind of degrade the audio. But you can essentially change the playback rate to either shorten the song or lengthen the song. So currently this song stands at about two and a half minutes. Let's say I want it to be right at two minutes. I could double click the track and this properties menu will come up. And there's a lot of information here, but what you're looking for is playback rate. And basically you can just adjust this until it kind of gets to where you're looking to get it. So let's try to change it to 1.2. And that puts us, that's actually a little more than we need. So let's undo that. Let's try 1.1. Not quite right, maybe 1.15. Okay, that's pretty good. So now, we can just kind of trim off this excess. So what you're seeing here is whenever, uh, basically a song can repeat. Um, and this is that's what this little dip in the waveform means, is this track is repeating. So we don't want that, so we're gonna trim that off, create a little crossfade here. And now this song sounds like this. You're gonna notice, you might notice that it's faster, you might actually hear the play rate change, but let's see. So it really depends on the song you're using and how aggressive you are with changing that playback rate in terms of how noticeable that's, that change is going to be. If you're wanting to make a song longer, another way that you can do that and avoid all the remixing work is to start with a song that's already a seamless loop. So I went ahead and imported a seamless loop just to show you what I mean here. So if we look in Reaper, that's what the second track is. Now again, this is made to be looped. So what that means is if I click on the right side and drag, the song is going to restart, but it's going it's already going to sound like a natural progression, like that it was supposed to be that way without you having to make any edits. So if we don't do anything, it sounds like this. It just kind of has a pretty abrupt end. But if we extend it, it sounds like this. So it has a pretty natural restart to the song that's probably not going to be noticed by people. Once you're finished remixing your track, you just go to File, Render, and then you can name it whatever you like, custom track, you select where you want to save it, um, and then under resample mode, you can kind of have, you have some options here. I like to use extreme high quality just because quality is king, but you know, if you want it to be a smaller file, you can do that as well. And then you just render it, and then it goes to the destination that you select. 
And then from there, you click that and you drag it into you know, your, your video editor uh, or whatever you're using to create whatever you're creating. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it helps you customize songs to better fit your videos or podcasts or whatever else you're working on. But I would also like to add that if you don't feel like doing the work yourself or you don't have the time, you should consider licensing one of my songs over at musicformakers.com. Because when you do, I'll actually throw in free customizations for things like lengthening or shortening a song or even rearranging a song. So if that sounds interesting to you, just head over to musicformakers.com. Uh, there's a library of hundreds of royalty-free songs you can, you can browse through there. So um, otherwise, happy audio editing, and I'll see you next time. Oh, you're still here? Ah, oh, hey, you're still here. Make sure you check out one of these things. Um, to the right or the left of my head, most likely. You'll probably, you might like them. I don't know.